Hi, I'm Josh McDowell, and I'll be your host throughout this series on how to make right choices. You know, making right choices is not always easy, and most of us have found out the hard way that our choices don't always turn out for the best. But in this series, you're going to discover how to make right moral choices every time. And to begin, let's look at three people, Darius, Sally, and Carol Ann, and then together with your group, you can evaluate the basis of their choices and the results of their choices. Sometimes you just gotta get away from everybody, you know? Clear your head for a minute. Hey, don't get me wrong. Look, I've got no second thoughts. It's just... I've always tried to stay out of this stuff, that's all. But I can't anymore. Not now, man. Not tonight. My cousin, he was only 14. Man, I didn't even know he was dealing. Little Jamie must have been holding out on Sea Dog, because old Sea Dog decided to make an example of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We called the police, but nothing happened. It never does. Sea Dog just found himself a 12 year old to take Jamie's route. It's nothing new. I carry this stuff around with me every day. But you can only put your fist through all so many times, you know what I mean, and that's it. Tonight, when the boys go out, I'm choosing to go with them. Can't be afraid of no sea dog. Because we've got justice on our side. I usually hate packing. I can never decide what to take. Not this time. I'm taking everything. Randy's picking me up at four. And we'll get the rest of the stuff on Sunday. My stepfather, Jerry, he doesn't really care where I live. And Mom's okay about it. Okay, so they don't approve of our living together. It doesn't matter. I'm 18 tomorrow, so it's my choice. Besides, I don't approve of them either. I mean, just because you're married doesn't mean you love each other. This is Randy's t-shirt. I stole it from him to sleep in. I just like to feel close to him. You know, before I met Randy, nothing in my life made any sense. But now, I just know we'll always be together, that's all. And things aren't that clear very often. I guess that's the difference. We really love each other. Hi. Jeez, what do you got in this thing? I can get it. I got it. Anybody for gas?
All right, okay. Uh, this is just really hard because I wanted to, I wanted to do this in person, but it's like you're the best little brother anybody ever had, and I know that mom and dad they can they make you crazy sometimes, you know, but that's not the thing. The the thing is that uh. Well, the thing is that when you're my age, everything's all different. No, you're too little to know that now, but... Wait. Okay, see? There's you. <laughs> and there's me. <laughs> I always wanted a little brother, and you're like the cutest little guy in the whole world. <laughs> anyway, it's not a... It's... <laughs> Okay, it's not Brian, okay? I mean, him and I, we're still friends, right? And school's hard, right? But you'll, you'll, you'll understand that when you get older, but it's not it. I mean, yeah, sure, there, there are some good times, and those are the best times, but, uh, you know, like when I was in that play, that was great. It, that's, how, uh, that's how I met Brian, and we, we were really good together. We really were. But I don't just mean in the play, it was... <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh, wait. Anyway, this this is kind of dumb, but I wrote this song for you. <laughs>
How much do we really have to know to make right choices? So often young people who have made wrong choices have said to me, Josh, if only, if only I had known. I think it's obvious that most of us need to know a whole lot more about the outcome of our choices if we're going to make consistent moral choices that are in our best interest in the long run. If only there was a way to see the implications of our choices way down the road, how much easier it would make it. Who can really say what's right or wrong? Only live once, yet there are consequences to our choices. Confusion, indecision, bad decisions. Avoid the pain of wrong choices and join millions who are experiencing right choices every time. CypherVision is proud to present Virtual Morality, making right choices every time. And now your host, Mr. Virtual Morality himself, Louis Seifert. Thank you. You know, it's never been harder for us to make right choices than right now. Why? Quick, pop quiz. Terrorists have taken over your town. There's a gun in the storefront of a local mall. Do you steal the gun to protect your family, or will that just cause more violence? Pop quiz. There's an important final at school tomorrow, but you've been caring for your sick father and haven't had time to study. Do you take a little uh, extra help from a friend during the exam, or will that only hurt you in the long run? Pop quiz. A rival lies about you to take your spot on the cheerleading squad. You could get the position back, but you'd have to blackmail her to do it. Hey, Taylor, what you gonna do? Well, I don't know. I mean, of course I'd like to protect my family, but what if I... Allison? Well, I don't think cheating is right, mm -hmm. but... Charlene? I'd like to have what's mine, but if I Okay, okay. To... What if? But what if? It's not right, but what if? But let me tell you something, kids. It's time to get off your what ifs and put some certainty into your lives to get rid of the guesswork and virtually wipe out the pain of decisions gone bad. I'm here today to show you that there is a foolproof way to make right choices every time, and it's called virtual morality. You know, I used to believe every guy that ever said I love you, and I really let myself get taken advantage of. Thanks to virtual morality, I'll never make a mistake like that again. I'm from a wealthy family, and my dad's real important and all. If people knew some of the things I've been up to, It'd be really rough on me and on my family. I, I simply can't take chances anymore. I need virtual morality. Before virtual morality, my life was a virtual mess. I got busted for drugs. 
drugs, DUIs, you name it. But now I have the confidence that comes from knowing what's right or wrong for me in every situation. That's right. You need never again find yourself saying, gosh, I hope it works out. Or gee, if I'd only known. With our system, you can know what's right for you every single time. The late Chastity Bellwether, superstar of daytime television, knew the power of virtual morality. Shortly before her death, she taped this important message for us. You know, not long ago, my career was going nowhere. I was ready to give up. Then late one night, I saw Lewis's commercial, and I thought, what have I got to lose? So I gave him a call. Two days later, the producer of the hit soap opera, The Young and the Promiscuous, invited me over for one of his late night readings. The choice was mine. Well, I have been on the show for three years now, and I'm making more money than I ever dreamed possible. Thank goodness I saw your commercial, Lewis. God bless you, virtual morality. That was filmed just two months before her tragic plane crash. If only she could have used our system to choose her flight. You know, I have to ask, were there any of you who felt at all uncomfortable with Chastity's testimony? Hmm? Of course. And we all recognize the need for traditional values. But haven't there been times when the one-size-fits-all approach to morality seemed inappropriate for your specific needs? That's because there's only one person who has the right to determine what's best for you. That person is you. Can I show you something? Scientists have long known that we currently use only a small part of our brains. This much? This much? Actually, only this much, about 10 to 15 percent. But using the revolutionary technology of virtual morality, we can help you unleash the untapped power of the other 85 percent of the brain. You have the potential. Virtual morality can help you realize that potential to make right moral choices every time. Well, enough talk. You want to see how it works? Yeah. Eva? The BMS 2000! Isn't that beautiful? You know, I need a volunteer from the audience. Uh, how about you, young man, right here? Adam Fincher, ladies and gentlemen. Does the virtual morality system sound like something that you could use in your life, Adam? It sure does. Great. Then why don't you try it on? There we go. Add twisted down. That's it. Wow, this seems so complicated. <laughs> Believe me, it is. But you won't have to understand a thing. Right now, the VMS 2000's patented sensors are interacting directly with the decision-making centers of your brain. This is incredible. I mean, everything seems to be coming into focus. <laughs> That's because virtual morality allows you to compute and interpret millions of cause and effect scenarios every second. Bottom line, Adam, you can know the outcome of your choices before you even make them. <laughs> wow. I can't believe how easy that is to use. But is it safe? You bet. And affordable, too. Let's watch this. The VMS 2000 was rigorously tested by the International Medical Association. It not only met, but actually exceeded the strictest safety requirements we have ever imposed. I'm recommending it to all my patients. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to afford the system for my Jennifer. But Lewis worked out a way for us to enjoy the benefits now and pay later. Now my Jennifer won't have to wrestle with her morality. She'll have virtual morality. Oh, yeah. What is it? Do you see? 
You know, before, I would have slept with anything in a cheerleader skirt. But thanks to virtual morality, I haven't had to worry about even one sexually transmitted disease. As a lawyer, I have to maneuver through a virtual maze of moral and ethical questions. It's great to know I've got virtual morality to help guide my way. Doctors, lawyers, students, even everyday women and men are turning to virtual morality and seeing what a difference it makes in their lives. Thank you. Right choices every time. Can you think of any reason not to harness the power within you to protect your future? It's safe, it's easy, and it's affordable. In fact, one of the principal goals in designing the virtual morality system was that no one should be without it. To that end, our special financing makes it possible for everyone to afford virtual morality. There's no need to send cash, no checks, no visa, and there will be no interest. All I need is your signature on this simple contract. So why wait? End the uncertainty and unnecessary pain in your life. It's up to you. Pick up the phone and call me at 1-800-666-7685. That's 1-800-666-SOUL. Operators are standing by.
heart that is pure and a love that Is there such a thing as an absolute standard of right and wrong that will help you to always make right choices? If there were such a standard, it would have to stand up to some pretty tough qualifications. For example, first, this standard would have to be objective outside ourselves. In other words, right would be right regardless of what anyone said. Second, this standard would have to be universal. That means regardless of the circumstances or situation, it would be right or wrong for everyone. And then, this absolute standard would also have to be constant. In other words, the standard would be true all the time, every time. Now that is quite a qualification. This standard of right would have to include every generation in history, past, present, and future. It would apply to every possible situation. And finally, it would have to affect every outcome, so the choice would always be in your long-term best interest. Is there any person, group, or organization claiming to meet these qualifications? Let's take a look. CypherVision is proud to present Virtual Morality, making right choices every time. And now your host, Mr. Virtual Morality, we interrupt this program to bring you the following special report. Choosers News Network takes you live to the scene with Geraldo Winfrey Raphael. Making right choices for the long run. It'd be easy if we could see the future, but we can't. So we rely instead on a standard of right and wrong, what some call truth, to guide our lives. What standards are teens using today to help make right choices? We're at Eisenhower High School to find out. Because now, the truth can be sold. Told, told, told. Right choices? Oh, I never have a problem with that because I've got the stars on my side. You know, astrology has been practiced for centuries by many ancient dynasties like the Jackson family. It's true. Hey, Phyllis, you want to come with us to Carlos Friday night? There's going to be a keg and a ton of guys. Oh, sounds great, but first I have to check my chart. Mercury's in retrograde and Venus is rising, but Jupiter's aligned with Pluto and there's a moon over Miami, so it's obvious. What is? I've got to call my astrologer because I can't make heads or tails of this. Hey, that's not Mercury. It's ketchup. Oh, yeah. I find it is, like, so easy to make the right choices when you're attuned to the divine oneness of the universe. 
That's why I practice Eastern Tandurian meditation. Carrying this crystal close to my heart helps clear the dissonance from my life by aligning my chakras with the celestial vibrations of the Godhead. It's also handy when you forget your combination. So do you find that your astrology gives you a pretty reliable standard from which to make right choices? Oh, absolutely. Well, pretty much. You never really know where the stars are going to be, so you have to have a good astrologist. A lot of them are bogus, you know, just in it for the money. Hello, thank you for calling Astroline. Please deposit $8 for the first two minutes. Nothing like personal service. Another great thing about the Eastern Tanduri approach is the use of essential oils. Like, if I'm really stressed over a decision, I just inhale from one of these natural extracts and voila, the extra clarity I need. Ooh, that's my nail polish remover. Right choices. There are no right choices, man. Read your Nietzsche, your Machiavelli. Right and wrong is nothing but the wishful thinking of a society too weak to face the prospect of a godless world and the lack of moral absolutes. Man and Superman, page 43. Deal with it, man. Right and wrong. It's an illusion. There's no such thing. If you're man enough to admit that, then you can... What is it? My bike's gone. Somebody stole my bike, man! Oh, this is wrong! This is just wrong! But it's I thought wrong. Nietzsche said there was no right. Shut up, man! Nietzsche never had a Trek 950 with titanium hubs, alloy rims, like really cool stickers on it and stuff. I want my bike! Yo, Phil, I thought your mom drove me this morning. Oh, yeah. Of course. At the heart of the Eastern Tandoori approach is the meditation. For this, we use incense. So do you think this system would help others make right choices in their lives? You know, I really couldn't say, I mean, each person has to find his or her own path to the place of unique oneness. As it says in the sacred hey, text. Yoko, the rock is on fire. Oh, oh my god! Could you. Could you. Sends only sign of his one. Excuse me, I'm Geraldo Winfrey Ryan. I know who you are. Look, I don't know why you're wasting your time talking to all these counterfeits. You want to stand up for right and wrong? It's all right here in this book, man. You just have to put your faith in the King of Kings. You mean Elvis? No, Jesus Christ. Ah, so you're Christian. Right. And do you feel that the... Uh, the, uh, the Bible? Right. The Bible helps you make right choices? Absolutely. And the best part about it is... Eric J. McFarland, I've been looking for you. Don't worry, he says. I'll be careful, he says. What could happen, he says. So what standard do you use to make right choices? Do you rely on the stars? Or the celestial oneness of a vibrating Godhead? On nothing at all? Or do you rely on the teachings of the Bible? You tell me. Because now, the truth... And this is Geraldo <laughs> Winfrey Raphael. <laughs>
Making right choices by following God and His Word as your absolute standard of right and wrong seems simple enough, but in reality it's not quite that easy. Because in order to make right moral choices, it means you must trust someone else with your future, and that someone else is God. But what if God says, wait, don't do that because I have something far better for you later. And what if waiting is not only boring, it's downright painful. Is it going to be easy to postpone immediate pleasure for some far off better plan in your life? That is going to require a deep belief that God does know what he is doing and has your best interests at heart. But in all honesty, God's plans for our long-term best interests 
goes contrary to our very nature as human beings. Because we are all motivated by our selfish interests for instant gratification or immediate pleasure. It's part of human nature to want what I want when I want it. Our tendency is to justify, rationalize, and even make excuses in an attempt to legitimize our selfish interests and pleasures. And it is this selfish nature that blinds us and keeps us from seeing that God's way is in our best interests. Let me show you what I mean. Stop it, you are so bad. He is so bad. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not going to go all the way. Why should we? Because technically, we can do this and still be virgins. Besides, if I said no, he might leave. And look at him. He is gorgeous. <laughs> hey, I'm in the prime of my life. Besides, it's not like this is just a one-night stand or something. What Rick and I have is really special. It's Tom. Huh? My name's Tom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where I go to school, the peer pressure is intense. You wear the kind of clothes I can afford <laughs> and forget it. Listen, I shouldn't have to put up with this emotional scar. I didn't start the fashion war. I'm just a victim. This thing is great. It demagnetizes the sensor so I can walk right out of the store without setting off the alarm. I made it in shop class. Hey, don't judge me, all right? Floor Mart is so huge, they're not gonna miss this stuff. And I feel better about myself because I got the things I need. I'm more popular. I do better in school, and I'm not a burden to my parents. Hey, everybody wins. Yeah, I lie to her. But, you know, just little lies for her own good. I don't think it's necessary to tell her exactly where I am every minute of the day, or every night for that matter. So I tell her what she wants to hear. Look at her, she's happy. Maybe ignorance really is bliss. Yeah. I was honest with my first girlfriend about making out with somebody else. She dumped me. I'm not going through that kind of pain again. Look, this relationship is important to me. And I've worked hard to develop a bond of trust between us. Why would I want to ruin all that by telling her the truth? <laughs> okay, I'll probably feel that tomorrow. <laughs> oh. I gotta remember to take an aspirin before I go to bed. Aspirin, aspirin. Okay, so I'm a little toasted. <laughs> but I had fun tonight. I mean, I usually never know what to say to people, but I just give me a little drink and it's like personality in a bottle. <laughs> my friends drink. So what am I supposed to do? Hey, Jesus didn't turn water into grape juice, did he? Besides, I think it's important that you should honor your father and mother. What better way than to be just like them? Those excuses may seem a, a, a little obvious and extreme but we've all made excuses to do what we wanted to do. 
To make right moral choices in life, we must, one, turn from our selfish excuses. Second, admit that God is the absolute standard for right and wrong. Third, submit to Him as Savior and Lord. And fourth, commit to His ways. You see, making right moral choices is not about following a set of religious rules, but rather living in a personal relationship with Jehovah God. However, to know God personally, you must first turn from your selfish ways, repent, and confess your sins. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Turn from your sin by acknowledging that you have been living contrary to God's ways and that you have been trying to do what is right in your own eyes. You must agree that your own way is wrong and that God and God alone defines what is right and wrong. Those attitudes and actions that are like Him are right. And those attitudes and actions that are not like Him are wrong. And when you acknowledge God as a source of right from wrong, you admit that God is sovereign and He and He alone is a standard for right choices. Next, you must submit to God as Savior and Lord and commit yourself to His ways. When you sincerely repent and turn your back on your sin, in other words, your selfish ways, you can claim God's total forgiveness. You are submitting to God and relying on Him as your Savior and allowing Him to take control of your life as your Lord. Then you are ready to commit to His ways in obedience to His commands as the basis of all your right choices. And believe me, He will empower you to make right choices. And if God can keep planets spinning in space and rivers running to the oceans and seasons coming and going, don't you think He can empower you to make right choices? He can forgive you and empower you if you'll let Him. If you have not trusted God for salvation, why don't you right now? We express our desire to God through prayer. And if you want to trust Jesus as Savior and Lord, then this prayer can express your heart's desire. Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally, the one who knows my future and has my best interest at heart. Thank you for dying on the cross and rising from the dead for me. Please forgive me of my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Take control of the throne of my life and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make me the kind of person you want me to be, a person who makes right moral choices. Amen. If you've already trusted Christ as Savior, but have been trying to direct your own life and are struggling to make right choices, just talk to God and say, Dear Father, I need you. I acknowledge that I've been directing my life and that as a result, I've sinned against you. I thank you that you have forgiven my sins through Christ's death on the cross for me. I now invite Christ to again take his rightful place on the throne of my life. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help me to make right moral choices according to your ways, your commands. Thank you for directing my life. Amen.
The four-step process in making right choices does work, but it doesn't come natural. You'll blow it from time to time, just like we all do. But by recommitting to God's ways, we form a new habit of making right choices. And you know, habits are formed by repeated behavior. To help you experience this habit-forming process in your own life, we've written a book, Truth Slayers. It explains this process through the adventures of Brittany Marsh, Jason Withers, and others from the PowerLink Chronicles. I'd encourage you to get this book from your group leader and to read it. It will help you see how it applies to some very specific areas of your life. And then to really put this life-changing process to practice, I encourage you to use the workbook, Setting You Free to Make Right Choices. The workbook activities would begin in your youth group, and then you'll have five workbook exercises to complete between the sessions. This will allow you to grapple with some tough choices and will allow you to practice the solutions between group meetings. Now, let's go back to the three young people we saw in the very first session, Darius, Sally, and Carol Ann. Kenny Marks is going to sing their story again, and then we'll hear what each of them have concluded about their own choices. She should just end it all She can't take anymore And now the dark clouds are everywhere And her broken heart hasn't got a prayer Ooh, life ain't fair In a world gone mad She never knew love before And he's a boy that she's fighting for doesn't matter that her mama says He's a love you're gonna lose She never listens to her mama now It's her life, she'll make it work somehow She wants that boy and she wants him now In a world gone mad In a world gone mad It's a choice you can be the chooser In a way. 
think you know what you're doing. And it all falls apart. One thing I do know, I won't ever be able to forget that little girl. You know, deep inside I knew, even if we were right for each other, what we were doing wasn't right. But I kept telling myself it was. <laughs> I could never get back to living with Mom and Jerry. But maybe I'll be able to work things out with my dad. You know, it's just that I felt so trapped and hopeless. Like I was in some bottomless pit or something and I couldn't get out. But it wasn't true. There was a way out. God's way. I know that now. There's a truth that can answer lies. There's a love you can recognize He came a long time ago For the good and the bad He's the way you can make things right He's the only truth in the dark at night My only prayer despite this world Gonna guide you. You know the good from bad.